Upon inheriting an abandoned trailer from his late father, a man found himself in a state of confusion. Having not seen his father for over 15 years, the news of his passing and the sudden possession of the trailer came as an unexpected shock. The 18-year-old named Mark stood before the unfamiliar trailer in a random forest, pondering the reason behind this unexpected gift. Mark, estranged from both his father and mother, began to inspect the worn-down trailer, searching for any clues as to why it had been bequeathed to him. Despite its neglected appearance, Mark sensed there might be something significant inside. With the key provided in a letter, he opened the creaking door, revealing an interior permeated by the stench of mold and animal feces. The scene appeared to be one of decay, and Mark questioned how his father could have lived in such conditions. Undeterred, he proceeded to explore further, opening drawers and braving the unpleasant odors. Amidst the pile of rubbish, Mark made a shocking discovery that brought him to tears. As he investigated, a loud noise emanated from one of the kitchen cabinets, startling him. The unsettling experience continued when whatever was inside the cabinet seemed to sense Mark's presence. As the cabinet door violently shook, Mark braced himself for whatever was inside. The sight of the vibrating door sent a shiver down his spine, prompting an initial instinct to flee the trailer. However, curiosity got the better of him. Regaining composure, he approached the cabinet, placed his hand on the door, and opened it slowly. To his surprise, a large possum darted out of the cabinet, racing past the startled young man. Mark, initially taken aback, jumped backward and landed on the ground. Once he realized it was just a possum, relief overcame him, and he laughed at the unexpected encounter. Yet, the revelation didn't end there. In the corner of the cabinet, Mark noticed a small, dusty notebook. Upon closer inspection, he saw his father's name written on top. It was the first non-disgusting item he had found, and the name intrigued him. Nervously, Mark opened the small notebook, revealing a diary detailing his father's life. Holding something that belonged to the father he last saw as a small boy stirred emotions in Mark. As he read through the pages, Mark was astonished. The diary contained more than just written words about his father, it held a letter addressed to him. His father expressed the hope that Mark was doing well and explained that he and Mark's mother never wanted to leave their son's side. However, they felt compelled to do so, as staying would have jeopardized Mark's life. The heartfelt writing continued, with Mark's father expressing the sincere wish that his son was now leading a good life. Filled with a mixture of relief and confusion, Mark absorbed the written words from his father's diary. The page ended with a cryptic promise to reveal the truth, leaving Mark bewildered. As he turned the page, his eyes widened at the sight of a phone number prominently written in the center. A surge of anticipation and anxiety gripped him as the words instructed him to call the number immediately upon reading. With the notebook in one hand and his phone in the other, Mark stepped out of the trailer. Memories flooded back as he pondered the mysterious circumstances surrounding his parents' sudden departure when he was just three years old. Raised by his grandmother, Mark had spent years searching for his father and mother, yet no trace of them was ever found. Now, on the brink of uncovering the truth, Mark struggled to make sense of the past. Standing at the precipice of discovery, he felt both nervous and determined. With shaky hands, he dialed the number, wondering who would answer on the other end. The phone rang for a few suspenseful seconds, leaving Mark on edge, eagerly anticipating the voice that would provide answers to the enigma of his upbringing. A woman's voice greeted Mark as he connected with the mysterious phone number. Before he could introduce himself, the woman startled him by addressing him by name. Bewildered, Mark held his phone at a distance, questioning how this stranger knew who he was. The woman remained elusive about her identity, adding to Mark's confusion. Seeking answers, Mark inquired about the woman's name, but his question was met with refusal. Undeterred, the woman spoke in hushed tones, as if fearing someone might overhear. Despite her secrecy, she quickly came to the point, urging Mark to go behind the trailer. She provided precise details about a white garden chair, instructing him to start digging there. Mark, taken aback by the woman's intimate knowledge of his surroundings, complied with her instructions. As he circled the trailer, he spotted the specified white garden chair and questioned the purpose behind digging. 
Skeptical and uncertain, Mark pressed the woman for explanations, but she emphasized the grave importance of his compliance. According to the mysterious woman, buried about a foot beneath the soil was an object crucial for Mark to unearth. She stressed the urgency of the task and instructed him to contact her immediately upon finding it. Abruptly, the call ended, leaving Mark in a moment of hesitation. Puzzled by the woman's demands and lack of transparency, he questioned the validity of following her instructions. Nevertheless, fueled by curiosity, he used a broken-off table leg to commence digging, and within a few minutes, the ground began to reveal its secrets. After digging through the soil, Mark uncovered a rectangular, white object encased in a plastic-sealed bag. The sight of the mysterious object, as commanded by the woman on the phone, sparked excitement in Mark. Pulling it out, he found a large white binder in surprisingly good condition due to the tight seal. Intrigued, he wondered about its contents. Carefully dusting off the exterior and removing the plastic seal, Mark opened the binder to find dozens of documents filled with legal jargon that he couldn't comprehend. The papers dated back years, and the names mentioned were unfamiliar. Beneath the legal documents, he discovered a stack of bank transfers. At the very end of the binder, a sealed picture caught his attention. Although the financial details seemed like gibberish to the 18-year-old, the picture intrigued him. It depicted five men with clearly visible faces. Puzzled, Mark questioned the significance of these documents in the picture, sensing that something shady was at play. Despite his aversion to economics in high school, the picture ignited his interest. Seeking answers, Mark decided to follow the woman's demands and call her back. With the binder in hand, he dialed the mysterious woman's number. She answered after just one ring, revealing her anticipation. Mark informed her that he had unearthed a white binder. In response, the woman burst into tears, expressing gratitude repeatedly. Overwhelmed, she emphasized that Mark had just changed everything. The call went silent for about a minute, leaving Mark in suspense, eager to unravel the mysteries hidden within the binder. As the woman on the other end of the line let out two long, low breaths, she seemed to be preparing Mark for something extraordinary. With a sense of anticipation, she shared that now that he had found the binder, she could finally reveal the truth. Cautioning Mark to keep an open mind, she dropped news that left him in disbelief, she was his mother, Judy Peterson, and he was her son. Overwhelmed with emotion, Judy apologized for everything that had happened. But the shocking revelations didn't end there. She delivered news that struck Mark like a thunderbolt, his father, Henry, was not dead. He was alive and well, with them. Placing the phone on speaker, Judy invited Mark to talk quietly. An older male voice confirmed he was Mark's father. Mark couldn't fathom the roller coaster of emotions he was experiencing. From believing his father was deceased to discovering both of his parents were alive, the day had taken an unexpected turn. Mark, wiping tears from his face, questioned the impossibility of it all. Judy explained that they had been in witness protection for over 15 years after getting entangled involuntarily in criminal affairs. His parents had placed the key evidence, the documents Mark had just unearthed, in the ground for him to find. The illegal documents and transactions held crucial information to bring down the criminal organization they were involved with. Judy emphasized that Mark held the evidence needed to dismantle the criminal network once and for all. The revelations left Mark in disbelief, processing the surreal turn his life had taken. There were extensive bank transfers and contracts that exposed the extensive fraud scheme these criminals were engaged in. The key linking everything together was the photograph firmly held by Mark a sealed picture at the back. Do you see it? Judy asked Mark, who responded with a positive hum. Well, that picture reveals the five heads of the crime organization. The police have been trying to apprehend them for years, and you now possess all the evidence needed to identify them. But why was all of this evidence in your possession? Mark inquired. His parents attempted to delicately explain the situation. We gathered it over the years because we were deeply embedded in their organization. It's not that we had criminal intent ourselves, we had no choice. Your father, being an accountant, handled the bookkeeping for a major corporation. Unbeknownst to him, this criminal organization had infiltrated every part of that company. He did their bookkeeping for years without realizing it. 
when he finally found out, we were too deeply entangled in their criminal web. That's when we started collecting evidence to incriminate the organization. Once we had enough, we knew we had to make the toughest choice of our lives, his mother explained. Leaving Mark was the single hardest thing they ever had to do, she continued. But we had no choice. The evidence Mark now holds in his hands put a target on our backs. As the organization grew more and more suspicious, we had to take action. Henry began to notice that they were discreetly being followed everywhere they went. Eventually, it became so troublesome that they had to enter witness protection. We didn't want you to grow up in an environment where danger was always lurking around the corner. We didn't know if tomorrow would be the day when those criminals would find us. You were so young, and you deserved to grow up carefree. That's why we gave you to your grandmother, his mother explained after completing the narrative. After the explanation, there was only one thing left to do. Judy asked her son to deliver the entire binder to the police station. There, the evidence could be sorted, and perhaps all of this could come to an end. However, she emphasized, don't go to the police station downtown, anywhere but downtown, in a panic. Mark, initially distrustful, listened as his mother had asked him to. As her story continued, he started to believe her. He understood why they made the choices they did, and tears streamed down his face. After a short moment of complete silence, Mark began talking. He thanked his mother for making that tough decision and assured them that he had a good life with grandma. However, there was one thing he didn't understand, why didn't you just go to the police back then? His mother let out a sigh of despair, explaining that this was precisely what they did 15 years ago. They went to the police and told them everything they knew. The police seemed to take it seriously and promised to help. But then, something strange happened after coming clean to the police. Despite waiting days for a response, the one they received was not the one they expected. Returning home late one day, they opened the front door only to discover that their entire house had been trashed. It was evident that someone had searched every inch. The police were the only ones aware of the evidence against the criminal organization. Fortunately, they had a personal friend within that precinct who could help. This friend confirmed a growing fear that the organization had infiltrated even their own department. Nobody could be trusted, and the evidence had to be hidden. The friend within the force made the brave decision to go rogue, placing them into witness protection without anyone within his own precinct knowing about it. They were totally off the grid, but not before hiding the evidence somewhere nobody would find it. Mark's mother concluded by explaining that this was precisely why Mark couldn't go to the police station downtown. They didn't know which officers there could be trusted, and even bringing it to their friend was risky. We don't know who's watching in there, Judy said. Mark now completely understood. He promised to help them take down these evil men. After hanging up the phone, he didn't hesitate for a moment. Mark got into his car and drove as fast as he could to the police precinct two towns over. That's when everything went swiftly. Walking into the police station with the binder tucked tightly under his arms, Mark asked for the commanding officer. After a brief wait, a stern-looking man stepped forward. Mark shared his story and presented the man with the binder. They stepped into an interrogation room, and together with a few other cops, they inspected the evidence. It took a little while for it all to make sense due to the sheer volume, but Mark could see the eyes of all officers widen in shock as they put together the puzzle pieces. One officer pointed at the picture that lay on top of the documents, saying, that's the head of police in North County. The other officers now saw it too. They needed to investigate this further, so they told Mark to go home and wait for a phone call. Mark agreed and eagerly awaited their response. Fortunately, he didn't have to wait long. On a Sunday morning, just as Mark was finishing a hearty breakfast with his grandmother, the doorbell rang. Who could that be, his grandma asked, but somehow Mark already knew. He had a gut feeling that policemen would greet him when he opened the door. Mark pulled open the front door and was greeted by a man in uniform. What is it, officer? Mark asked. Do you have news about the thing we looked at, he inquired carefully. The policeman nodded and confirmed, we can confirm that, because of your evidence, we arrested all the involved parties, including the three police officers in North County. 
The police officer then smiled again as he turned his bulky body sideways, blocking Mark's view of what was behind him. Now, Mark could clearly see a police car parked on the road, and out of it stepped two individuals, two individuals who had waited to hug Mark for a long time. The officer said that everything was safe now that the entire organization was behind bars. There was no reason for Mark's parents to remain in witness protection, so they exchanged information with their friend in North County, leading to their address. The officer asked, are you ready to meet your parents? Mark didn't have to think twice about his answer. He stepped past the policeman and walked over to his parents, who were already in a full sprint. It was a heartfelt moment, with tears in all three of their eyes as they hugged each other again for the first time in 15 years.